Color grading. What does our color grading workflow look like? We will see in this video. My name is Damien Cooper and welcome to Monkey Pixels. We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. Disclaimer. This is not an in-depth tutorial on how to color grade because there's way better tutorials out there than I could actually ever provide, but this is more of a workflow on how we do things and why we do it that way and maybe you can learn something. And we work in Final Cut Pro 10, but I think that actually applies for all kinds of videos. So really good color grading can actually enhance your story. For example, your protagonist is out there and he's really freezing and it's cold with a blue tint to your video you can actually enhance the storytelling as well as the other way around. If you're outside and it's really hot then you wanna go uh, for warm tones to actually feel the warmth of the video where the protagonist is actually being placed. For example, we've recently shot this video called Spring Feelings and as the name says, we wanted to portray a feeling as it were spring and all the flowers are blossoming. So what we did is we actually turned all the green colors into pink to have it look like everything is in flower and all the flowers are blossoming. And that is one way to actually enhance your storytelling with color grading. So there isn't really this one look that you should apply for all your videos because every video is different. For example, one of our biggest clients is a beauty clinic here in Vienna. They want to go for this kind of high fashion look. It should all be really natural and that doesn't go for like let's say you shoot a uh, UFC fighter which everything should look a little bit more grungy and not as clean and natural. So there's different kinds of video that need different kinds of color grading. But what we will give you right now is an overview of how we achieve different looks or how we color correct and our overall workflow of how we do color grading. But before we actually look on how we edit it, it's uh, safe to say that you should start with shooting it right in camera. So for example, I highly recommend trying to avoid automatic white balance because it's a pain in the ass to try to match different shots. Um, in different scenes when the white balance is just bouncing around or it's just different and off from one shot to another. So set your scene right and usually just go for one white balance, set the picture profile on all your cameras if you have different cameras to match them um, for the same and that actually makes the color grading process a lot easier in the end. As for picture profiles, it depends on your camera, but I highly recommend if you don't really have super fast turnarounds and can't really do a lot of color grading anyway, uh, to go for a flat profile. What does flat profile mean? There's lock profiles in most professional cameras and more and more diesel R-type cameras get flat profiles too. If you don't know what a flat profile is, it basically means that you have a really desaturated image and there's not a lot of information baked into the image yet. So you get more dynamic range and you get more options to color grade afterwards. For example, you have an image that is really saturated and like the blue is really blue, the red is really red and the contrast is really high. When all these informations are already baked in after you shoot it, then it's really hard to change these attributes later in post. So when you shoot in a flat profile where everything is really gray and gray and there's not a lot of colors or contrast baked into the footage yet, you can decide later uh, which parts you want to have saturated, what kind of colors you want it to be and where you want to set your exposures and your contrast. So if you have the time and a little bit of knowledge, I highly recommend shooting in some kind of flat profiles. But now let's watch how we actually do it. So, here we have a video for Set Client, the beauty clinic. It's a commercial about a wedding cosmetic package and the idea here is to go for really natural skin tones for a really bright and glossy kind of feeling. As I've already said, it's a lock profile, so we shot in C-Lock 3 and everything looks really grain gray. So the first thing we need to do is we need to do the color correction. What does color correction mean? It means to get this footage to look as natural as possible, to get the look back that you actually have seen on set. So how do we do it? Our workspace, uh, we have a predefined um, workspace here and what I actually need to see in that color space is our vector scope as well as an RGB parade. The vector scope shows you the saturation. As you can see here, there's hardly any saturation in this image because it's not going out anywhere. 
And later, if we're increasing the saturations, these values will go out in the different kind of colors we are actually saturating. The second part is the RGB parade. That means we see the waveforms of the different colors. So zero is basically your shadows and 100 is your highlights. So as you can see here, there's not a lot of information in the blacks and there's not a lot of information in the highlights either. Ideally, we want to stretch all these colors out to match somewhere between the 100 and the zeros. So how do we do it? I usually prefer having color wheels. And that goes for basically any editor, uh, Premiere Pro as well as Final Cut, and they basically all have the same tools. They look a little different from time to time, but every editor has basically the same tools. So our first step is to bring up the highlights again. I will just do a quick rate here. I will not go into too much details. So as you can see here, we expanded our waveform. So we are peaking at 100 a little bit. And now we need to bring down the shadows again. So what we need to do now is just lower the shadows, lower the shadows, rise the highlights. So now we just brought back the contrast and the contrast actually looks kind of right. But now the saturation is still nowhere where we need it to be. So we now raise the saturation of our entire image and that is just everything. I want to have her skin a little bit more saturated. So here we go. That already looks way better than before. That is the before, that is the after, and that was done in 30 seconds. So now it comes to the famous orange and teal look. Why orange and teal? Because orange and teal is actually color contrasty. Orange is on the one spectrum of the color uh, chart as and teal is on the other side. So we want to just create a little bit of contrast and that is by doing we push the shadows a little bit into the teal and blue areas as well as the highlights and now we bring the midtones back here we have it because now her skin is really in the orange kind of area as well as everything else the shadows and the highlights are more in the blue so we create a color contrast here and that is what we want to go for. So orange and teal, when not overdone, is not necessarily a new trend that everybody's using right now. It's just the way color science works. Because we want to separate her from the background and we do that with creating color contrast of her orangey skin tones as well as the blue highlights and shadows in the background. So here you can go back and forth with the color grade. So the more orange you put into the mid-tones, the more you need to push the blues and teals into the shadows. So our overall image is really leaning towards the blue side as you can see here with our waveforms now, which is fine because the entire scene is really more of a white blue look. So we push a little bit more towards the orange in the midtones and maybe we take a little bit of saturation out of the highlights. So there you have it. Now I have an image that I actually kind of like. I mean, we do have a little bit of blue tint in the back, so maybe we take this out of the shadows just a tiny bit. So there you have it. This is just a really quick rate of getting from our really gray and gray awful looking lock footage back to an image we can actually use. The next step that I usually like to do is I like to add a custom LUT. So we add a creative LUT on top of our footage. I have a huge library of LUTs that I use for different kinds of work. So I already know what kind of LUT I was going for. So let's say we're going for that LUT. And that is just looking awful. So we need to turn that down a lot. So this is zero, this is 100, and that is just way too much. So what that LUT does is just giving us a little bit of more contrast into the image, giving it a little punchy feeling and going for a somewhat stylistic look. So here it is without a lot, here it is with the lot applied on 40% and it gives a little bit more punch to the image. It adds a little bit more saturation to the midtones as well as a little bit more blue to the rest of the scene. And there we already have a really nice looking orange and tealish natural kind of look. What else we could do is we can actually add a vignette to it because I kind of want to have the scene focus on her. 
So what we do here is we add the vignette that goes differently in every editor, I think, but in Final Cut, it actually looks a little bit like this. Then you can adjust the size and the amount you darken the image. Here you have a little bit more focus on her with the vignette. So, and there you have it. This is our basic color correction workflow. We start with lock footage, then we color correct it so that it looks a little bit more natural. Then we throw a custom LUT on top of it and that is basically our color grading workflow. So that was a really natural color grading. I just did a quick grade, just a couple minutes. So usually you would go really into detail, tone that up a little bit. But what if you were gonna go for some more stylistic kind of footage and all that travel feeling? So right here I'm showing you a clip of a comedy series we shot in uh, LA a couple months ago. And now we kind of want to overdo the whole color grading and go for a more artistic kind of look. So let's see how that works. So here we're looking at some log footage of a comedy series we shot a couple months ago in LA. So the first step we did is just add our color correction so that we have it look natural. But now we don't want to have it look natural anymore. We want to go for that travel uh, feeling kind of look. So what we add now is we add a U and saturation curve and then for example the green. Usually the greens are never really green in all that kind of video. So what we do is we change these colors and we can manipulate them however much we want. So we can go for a really yellowish kind of look and really overdo the whole orange and teal look. So as you can see here, we changed the entire scene by just changing one color. We just changed the green to a more orange kind of look. Now we can go back into our color wheels and just lower the midtones a little and rise our shadows just a tiny bit and then do a little bit more saturation overall. So as you can see here, by just changing one color from green to more of that orange feeling, we changed the whole thing up. It doesn't really look as natural anymore, but now we have this travel vlogger, travel video kind of feel uh, that a lot of these guys like Sam Cole, the Taylor Cut use by just changing the greens to more orange kind of feeling and overdo the orange and teal look just a little bit. So there you have it. This is our general overview of how we do color correction as well as color grading. Uh, on top of that, we would actually use some noise reduction, but I highly recommend doing that as a very last step because it will even kill the most dominant computer. Uh, we could also add some lens flares, some light leaks, some, some light effects, but that goes really more into the elaborate kind of manipulating of color correction. And maybe we'll do another uh, video about that if you're interested in that kind of stuff too. I hope you liked that video. Again, it's not a really in-depth tutorial and that was just really 30 seconds to a minute quick grade. Um, but this is our overall workflow of how we do our color correction. I hope you liked that video. Consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and see you on the next one.